We all know about data, right? Well, we want to take you to a whole new data place. We're going meta. Metadata is data about data. It is generated by virtually every way you communicate in 21st century life. Here are two people communicating today. Let's say we know nothing about what they're saying. We can still learn a lot about them from other information we can glean. Metadata is this intelligence. So this means things like locations, times, durations, and data about the device you used. But it also includes the same information about everyone who you're communicating with, when, where, and for how long. Web browsing constantly generates metadata too. And of course, you probably declare some of this stuff yourself on social networking services. But loads more than you know about is being collected by these companies, including information about your devices, where you log in from, what time you're checking your feed, who you're looking at, and what it is you're searching for. The creation and disclosure of metadata even continues when we sleep, because our devices are continuously communicating with cell towers and other networks about what we're doing and not doing. You actually don't have to do anything to produce metadata, which is a bit nuts. When it's all put together, metadata says a lot about you. So obviously it's the data controller's golden egg. It's highly valuable for advertising purposes because by generating these vast profiles of an individual's private life and interactions, companies will compete to target us with marketing and advertising. We know this. We see evidence of it in the right-hand ad panel of most sites we ever visit these days. But it's not just industry that is so hungry for metadata. Not very long ago, if governments and police wanted to know things about you, like where you'd been and who you're friends with, what newspapers you read, they would have to question you or get a warrant to pursue their investigations. But not anymore. Metadata tells them instantly. And since, as we've seen, it doesn't contain the content of your communications, metadata isn't given the same legal protections, despite revealing just as much, if not more, as the content of our exchanges themselves. You might have actually already heard of metadata, because just metadata is something governments talk about a lot. It's just plain old metadata. That's all we're gathering. Not spying on the content of your emails or phone calls. No siree, just plain old metadata. Nothing to worry about. Carry on with what you're doing. Since metadata reveals relationships, access requests for this information are often very broad, and governments require that companies collect and store this data for years. So think about this. Who is everyone you spoke to in the past year? Who did they speak to? And who did those people speak to? Are you absolutely sure that not one of all those people could be suspected of a crime, or be of any interest to your or any other government? Because if they are, then that makes you part of the network. Surveillance of this kind automatically places you within the net without any wrongdoing on your part. What has happened to your rights here? Conclusions based on assimilated metadata are often entirely circumstantial. So on top of everything else, this is leaving us in serious ethical muddy water. All because you knew someone who knew someone who knew someone of interest. Or all because you were somewhere where someone of interest was. But it's only metadata, right? It only paints a very accurate picture of you based on a compilation of your locations, contacts, interests, reading habits, searches, friends, family, professional and personal life and history over extended periods of time. What's the big deal? On the other hand, if you'd like to see it get the legal protection it deserves, Privacy International are fighting to end indiscriminate metadata collection and retention. Learn more and join us at privacyinternational.org.